My name is Matt, welcome back to Xenomorph Universe, and today I want to talk about one of the big problems that I have with um, actually the original three and a lot of the other films. Um, so I am going to briefly talk about some of the other stuff like Alien vs Predator, God help me. Um, but what I want to talk about is the incubation period for the actual um, uh, chest burster. So the uh, embryo, the alien live, larvae, whatever you want to call it. The little bastard that sits inside your ribcage and then just all of a sudden wants to join the party at a moment's notice. So um, this has been muddled up and mixed around and messed around with completely um, over, the, you know, over the length of all the films. And um, so we're going to stick with the core three films as usual because the rest are just garbage. But um, there is no real evidence for how long it takes. Now people are going to start citing comic books and other um, expanded universe rubbish. We're not interested in that in this, um, you know, in this video. If you don't like the fact that I only include the first three films, then I'd literally unsubscribe because basically that's what I want to talk about most of the time. Um, but anyway, getting back to the subject, how long is the incubation period? And um, we are going. I'm going to do another video later on about the actual growth of the alien and how long that takes. So, if we look at the first film, Alien, the 1979 classic, um, there is no real uh, mention of time in the film. So, the uh, time it takes for Kane to be infected, dragged back to the ship how long he sits inside um, the med the medical bay, the medical wing, and then his awakening and then the um, chest burster scene. So we know how long it took from the waking up to the chest burster scene because he says, before we go back to sleep, I need something to eat. And then Dallas says, I'm buying and all that rubbish. And then we have the chest burster scene. So we know that that's literally, I don't know, five, ten minutes up to half an hour, something like that. Um, but how long was Kane actually out of it for? Uh, every time that they switch scenes, it seems like quite a lot of time has gone past. There's a lot of repairs. Parker and all the rest of it. Um, not pa yes, Parker and Burke say that it. You know, they. Um, uh, Burke, sorry, say that you know it's 48 hours or something like that. We don't know how long it took them to actually check um, what is damaged and what isn't. So we can kind of say that it's. Two, you know, it could be one, but two, three days quite easily. Um, you could easily sneak that in there without there being any problems. And there's nothing that really stands out that says that it doesn't. Um, so you know, we're basically we've got a time zone between you know zero to twenty-four hours, forty-eight. I'd say forty-eight hours to three days, something like that. Um, we don't know how big the actual um, in, the embryo that's implanted is. By the size of the face, it could be anything from the size of, I don't know, so just say a small marble to, um, I don't know, a packet of 10 cigarettes. Who knows? But, um, you know, it has to grow to the size of a chest burster, which is, you know, the size of a rolling pin completely, if you want to think about it like that. Um, so yeah, you know, how do, where does it get its nutrition from? It, obviously, it could probably get its nutrition from the host. Where exactly does it sit, etc. We'll go into that later on in another video. But um, I like the fact, I like the idea that it could take between, you know, 48 hours and 72 hours. I like that idea. That kind of makes scientific sense to me. Um, even though that would be rapid, rapid growth. Um, so then... If you look at aliens, there is no real reference there. The colonists, we don't know how long they've been on the wall. The girl that actually has the chest burst, we don't see that either. So we don't know how long she's been there. Um, when we look at Alien 3, Ripley is running around what seems like for two or three or four days. Um, now you could speculate that possibly this is because it's a queen or she thinks it's a queen or what have you. Um, but yeah, you see there's a good um, indication of how long this could possibly be is the fact that Ripley has probably been, been out for one or two days uh, when they recover her, um, that she's been running around this entire uh, prison facility for two or three days, maybe even four days, and then the birthing scene at the end of the film, which was omitted for some films and which wasn't. But we do know up until that point um, that she hadn't actually given birth, as it were. 
So if we'll just look at them three films, basically we've got a, you know, I would say between 24 hours and 72 hours between there, which nicely seems believable. Now, when we actually, and this is the reason why I can't stand one, the extended universe, number two is the Alien vs Predator films, and number three, Covenant and all the other rubbish that go with it. For the simple fact is these things go now go because of pacing or whatever, I don't know, but they go at rocket speed. Um, in Alien 4 we have the dude who's running around, he's been impregnated, not for that long, a couple of hours, maybe six hours, maybe possibly twelve at a push. But the guy with the glasses on where it comes out of his chest and goes through the guy's head is ridiculous. You know, let's not be stupid about it. Um, you know, it was hard enough when you watch the original film for it to burst through Kane's chest. Trying to burst through someone's chest and through their head instantly is just fucking stupid. Next we move on to the Alien vs Predator films when they're in the temple. It is, what is it, half an hour? An hour? Maybe an hour and a half? It is ridiculous. Absolutely ridiculous. The Predator, it takes longer for some reason. He can run around like a dickhead for some reason. It doesn't affect him until the very end. Again, it's it, it's just, yeah. And this is why I don't like these films because they it's a mockery of the science of the science fiction of it. When we look at... Um, Again, Prometheus, Prometheus, uh, the whole tadpole, stupid deacon thing. Yes, I know that's not meant to be the xenomorph, but it's not far off, or whatever. That is just, it makes me want to fucking cringe. And when we look at Alien Covenant, the little white things that pop out of everyone's backs, I don't know the name for them, neomorphs or whatever they're called, I don't know, and I don't care. They are ridiculous, stupid. Some spores go into your ears, and then all of a sudden... Half an hour later, you've got this thing, you know, the size of a small child coming out your fucking back. It's ridiculous. Um, and then when you look at uh, the actual captain, face over on his face, uh, face over on his face, and the other bloke, these aliens are coming out within less than within less than six hours. It's just preposterous. Um, the whole scene, <laughs> the whole scene in Covenant, where a mini alien comes out of the captain. And it stands there with its arms out like a puppet is just... I'll get to that later in another video. Regardless, back to where we were. Um, you know, I to me it has to be at least 40 hours. So I'd put a, a stamp on it of 40 hours to 72 hours. Um, please let me know what you think in the comments. Unless you're going to start spouting shite from the extended universe, I'm not interested. But you can anyway, why not? It's just theories, ideas and my view on these films. Look after yourselves and I'll see you next time.